It is 29 minutes before 1 o'clock as you stay tuned to Around Noon here on 90.3, where tomorrow I share my conversation with modern dance legend Merce Cunningham, whose company comes to Playhouse Square this weekend. Plus, we enter the artistic dreamland of Neil McDonald, who examines the myths of Roswell at the Akron Art Museum. And we have a few Cleveland laughs with comics from the new WVIZ comedy special airing later this week. That's all tomorrow around noon here on 90.3 Idea Stream. Three, two, one. For over 40 years, Harvey Pekar has been a herald of American jazz music. While many may know him for his comic book series, American Splendor, for those who are true lovers of jazz, Harvey's also a much-respected music critic. This weekend at Oberlin College, Harvey is trumpeting the call, not just for jazz, but for the jazz avant-garde. Partnering with another Cleveland native, jazz musician and composer Dan Plonzi, the two have created something entirely new, a jazz opera, Leave Me Alone, which gets a free world premiere Saturday night at 8 in Oberlin's Finney Chapel. Today around noon, we share a preview as Harvey, Dan, and the show's producer, Paul Schick of Real Time Opera. Join us in the KeyBank studio here at Idea Center in Playhouse Square. And welcome, everyone. It's good to have you Hi. all here. Hi, Dean. Yeah. Uh, but I should mention, too, that our webcam is up and running, so if you're listening and near a computer, you should go ahead and log in at wcpn.org. Harvey, I want to start with uh, you. The, the term avant-garde or, or vanguard generally refers to experimental works that, that push the boundaries of, of right. all kinds of art. So over the years, what's attracted you to, to avant-garde jazz? Well, I like, I like avant-garde everything, all, mm. all avant-garde art. And I like it because, you know, I, maybe the avant-garde musicians get, you know, uh, you know, the highest rating in, 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 in my opinion, you know, because they're breaking boundaries they're, and they're, you know, they're setting things up for the next, next generation. It's because of them that, you know, music evolves or, you know, literature evolves. If everybody was like Wynton Marsalis, we'd still be in the same place. See? <laughs> yes, I've heard that said too. <laughs> Dan, do you shy away from those labels or, or embrace them, things like avant-garde? Um, I don't know what to make of them anymore. As a, as a student, it meant a lot to me, and I felt that I had to be right on the edge and try to be creating something new every time. But as the years have gone by, I've just been trying to do more and more what appeals to me at the moment, and I just trust that it'll be a little bit different than what everyone else is doing, mostly because I'm completely unable to imitate. I, I, <laughs> I think it's been a real blessing that I'm not a better musician than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so it has to be new every time. Yeah, exactly. How did you and Harvey meet? Uh, it's, it goes way back. Uh, I actually read a piece by Harvey years and years ago on Sun Ra, and I think that was probably the first thing I actually read of his before I even read his comics. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, when I was growing up in Cleveland Heights, I would see his American Splendor, but I, I don't remember, I never bought one. It wasn't until college and a mutual, uh, I mean, a, a friend of mine had one of Harvey's comics and uh, it's like, oh man, this is great. This guy's just writing about his life. Um, and I put my comic books aside years ago and then suddenly here's this guy writing about real life and um, it, I've been a fan ever since. I'm curious about um, Paul. What brought you into the mix? Um, was there something already going on between uh, Harvey and Dan in terms of putting together music and, and words? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, Dan and I have collaborated on three operas, uh, for which I've written libretti. And um, I started an opera company in 2002 called Real Time Opera. And we recently uh, decided that we wanted to commission a piece from Dan Plonzi. And in speaking with him, he expressed an interest in working with Harvey Picar. And we got them together. And um, we contracted them both to put together this piece. Yeah, I should say that my wife, Mantra, I hope she's listening out there, um, <laughs> 
takes responsibility for thinking of the idea of calling Harvey because <laughs> she's also a big fan. So what did you think, Harvey, when you got that call? Uh, you know, I mean, first of all, I thought, you know, wow, I'm going to make some more money. <laughs> yeah, and, I, I remember I, you saying, yeah, I don't have a habit of turning down work, is what you said. <laughs> yeah, and, and then I, but, but I, you know, I want, I want to give people their money's worth. So then I started thinking, an opera libretto, and you know, and I think opera, you know, the the, the standard repertoire opera pieces just, you know, turn me off. You know, all that screaming and, you know, and offing, and 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 and, it, and it's it's so corny, you know. I mean, I you know, the, the singing's nice, but, you know. Uh, so I thought, you know, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to write one of these, you know you know, lame dramas or anything like that. What can I do? So I thought, you know, one thing, you know, I do write is I write a lot of essays and stuff. And I'm real interested in um, in what's going on now in this centu century, you know, because it seems like, you know, that um, different art forms are just... Uh, changing so slowly and there's so much resistance i mean there's so much resistance to a lot of modern art that i think maybe it's a hereditary thing you know like some people can't even hear it like you know it's like dogs can hear high notes and we can't something like that <laughs> it, i just I, you know so anyway i was you know i've always been kind of alarmed by the fact that nobody seemed to care you know whether you know, music advanced, and, you know, music or, you know, anything, literature, painting. But um, in the past, there have been intrepid souls that have, you know, kept on experimenting, you know, no matter what, and have kept things moving no matter what. Maybe they'd be hated for most of their life, but, you know, like Van Gogh, I mean, he never sold a painting. As soon as he died, they couldn't get enough of him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I just, I've, I've been looking around and it seems like things that are, the, the rate of uh, evolution in the art forms is kind of like slowing down. Like one guy, you know, who I'm supposed to do an inter interview with uh, a little later today, he, he was telling me he, he used to be into performance art a lot. And now, you know, like it's dead, hmm. you know, and, and, and there are, you know, it's just jazz musicians who, you know, like not, you know, who play not only, you know, what's, you know, what's new uh, today, but, you know, like play stuff that was done like in 1960, like by Ornette Coleman, they're regarded as extremely radical. And, um, you know, a lot of times people like Dan, you know, who's, uh, don't, doesn't earn his living as a, as a musician, he's a teacher, math teacher, you know, he has to like produce his own records. I mean, because there's, there's no money in it, you know. Well, let the, me stop you there and, and see how the music and, and the ideas that you're talking about have come together in this piece of opera. Uh, we've got um, five singers in the studio with us and and uh, I was going to say a player piano. No, a player at our piano, our Overland Steinway, who's uh, going to perform um, something from the opera. And it is, do we know? Right. We've got several excerpts. I'm not sure which one is lined up first. Avant-garde artist. So this actually speaks to <laughs> right. what, what uh, Harvey is talking about. It's our avant Well, it'll speak for itself. You guys are... <laughs> are going to sing it. Um, I can introduce the performers while they're setting up oh, here. Good. It's Dan Mahalik on piano, uh, Gerard Michael D'Amelio will be singing later, Christopher Rice, Patty Stubel, Kate Rosen, and Joanna Lemley. And this is Joanna and Kate. Avant-garde 
artists who have day jobs and practically no fans have a rough time of it. I know I did. Once in a while I would get nice reviews from somewhere or other. But no one would notice Some of my Of my uh, Thought I was Some of my Acquaintances thought I was Thought I was not Because I published my own Because I published my own Comic books and Consistently lost money on them An excerpt from Leave Me Alone, performed live in our KeyBank studio. And that uh, opera, which is a collaboration between uh, Dan Plonzi, Harvey Picar, and uh, produced by Real Time Opera, is on stage in Oberlin uh, this coming weekend. You can see bits more of it now online at wcpn.org via our webcam. And uh, I, I want to ask, um, Paul, about the story that Harvey and Dan have come up with. Well, I would say story is maybe an exaggeration. I would call it a, a kind of non-narrative assemblage of vignettes all it's pertaining a to a... It's a polemic. <laughs> it's a polemic. <laughs> it's a polemic. Um, and they've been um, aligned in such a way to produce a really, really strong uh, directed tension as, as the piece develops. It's but, hard to um, put on a card. I wouldn't... <laughs> yeah, I, it, it really sorry. Is. <laughs> it's... it's, it's, it's I guess if you're sort of telling people um, in non-technical um, language what they would see when they saw this opera, um, how else would you describe it? They, there would be scenes from uh, daily quotidian life, um, from the lives of Dan and Harvey, um, and then they would also be seeing scenes in which the artists are both reflecting on the implications of those. Um, Harvey's view is a little bit more political and uh, Dan's more personal as they're approaching those questions. Uh, it's a piece very much about its own making. So um, the process comes becomes, to mind. that's right, yeah. <laughs> it, it, sounds, it sounds kind of dry as we're describing it, but it's, it's really funny. There's these great scenes where my wife and I are arguing over whether to clean the kitchen or to clean the living room, which one's more important. And she's yelling about those people who, who arrive on time and how, she, how angry she is. And I say, you hate all our friends. And, you know, and there's a scene where we find an opossum in the basement and they're dancing opossums on the stage. It's, it's really going to be entertaining, um, so much so that I'm worried that, our, that people won't understand that it's actually very avant-garde and it's in its shape and its form and... Um, and, and actually that's a, a good point because as Paul was describing it, um, part of, part of that, that pushing the boundaries is the form of it, um, not just the musical Yes, um, yes piece. exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. And that it's not about a bunch of, you know, kings and upper class dueling over some, you know, beautiful woman. Who, who has consumption. And exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's very different than that. Yeah. I, I'd just like to point out that I was, uh, I just heard Dan's music for this yesterday. And I was just amazed by, this guy can write music. I mean, you know, he could hear a couple of random people talking on the street and, you know, you give him a transcript of it and he'll write you some nice music for it. It's, a, it's amazing. I mean, you know, like he's picked up stuff 
that I've written, you know, without, you know, having a thought about, you know, putting it to music, and he's done a great job. I, you know, that I really started to feel real optimistic about this undertaking. Oh, not until you I, heard it, like, yesterday yeah. or something. Yeah. Did you? And from well, Harvey, I mean, that's a real honor. Yeah, yeah. No, well, that's, it, you know, this is kind of scary for me. You know, it's it's a first, and I don't know how people are going to like it, you know, so... And, and does does being liked matter a lot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I had more love, there's no way. I, I mean, there's there's no the, you know you'd never know how I I, I was gonna turn out. <laughs> <laughs> Twisted warp thing like I am now. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. And yet, I I don't know. Sometimes there's a tension there that says if there was more love, maybe there'd be less art. So. Who knows? But let's hear another song. Um, What excerpt shall we do this time? Over the years. Over the years. Yeah, this is this comes towards the end of the opera, and wait, this is yeah. Yeah. Have we succeeded? We don't have titles for all the pieces. They're called affectionately Q (laughs) twenty four. But yeah, well, I don't need to introduce it. It'll explain itself. But this is towards the end. And this is Patty and Michael singing. Another excerpt from the opera Leave Me Alone, which will have its premiere on the Oberlin stage, uh, Finney Chapel, coming up this Saturday night. And once again, we are talking with the um, creators and originators behind that. Harvey Picar joins me in the KeyBank studio, along with saxophonist Dan Plonzi and with producer Paul Schick of Real Time Opera. And uh, playing our Oberlin Steinway was uh, Dan Mahalik, and um, our singers included, um, is it Gerard Michael? Demilio, very good, and uh, Patty Stubel, yes. and we will. Um, we have time for one more vocal selection. But before we get to it, I, I wanted to ask about um, if the avant-garde kind of sensibility, Paul, extends to the staging as well. You, you mentioned that it's sort of vignettes uh, from from life. Um, how will we see it on stage? Um, Jonathan Field, the stage director, has reached into his immense imagination and uh, knowledge of various types of theatrical tradition. And so he's assembled something that I think um, in many ways echoes the, the way the um, incongruous elements that comprise the piece um, on a musical and textual level um, are being held together as well. So um, expect everything. <laughs> Pushing the boundaries in all directions. Yes. <laughs> and and Dan, you have your saxophone with us, um, with us, with you, uh-huh. <laughs> all of the above. But um, we'll I, all I, play wanted it to, later. I, I wanted to mention that uh, along with the singing, there there's an instrumental portion yeah. of the score. So there's a whole ensemble of eight people and um, hopefully, well, it, it sounds totally different when, when we're all playing. So um, 
um, I'm, I'm, I'd like to play just a few oh, notes please. just to just to inject a little bit of the um, avant-garde saxophone vocabulary into the show. Okay. That sounded like the argument between you and your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be able to drown her out. Um, <laughs> but um, no, that's that's where I, I came from musically is listening to music um, like the music of Albert Eiler and John yeah. Coltrane and Ornette Coleman and Sun Ra and Anthony Braxton. And uh, but over the years, I, I the avant garde just kept pushing forward, so that like what I just played. Um, is something that you could have heard someone play something like in 1965. Mm -hmm. So um, the avant-garde has continued to move, and, and as I was saying earlier, I don't even know where it is now, but I feel like I've come all the way full circle back to writing music that's, um, like in that last excerpt that you heard, that's just, you know, pretty. And, um, and I, I, I hope the listeners heard just the message of that one was um, that... For me, it's really important to, to do music that will inspire people to do music. So that about the avant-garde, it's sometimes said, as Harvey said uh, in, in his speech, that, that people will say about a painting, oh, my grandson could have done that. Mm -hmm. So great, you know, it, it, it is, it's open. The world's open to, to people contributing to art. And if you're, if you're not hung up on trying to imitate someone or be part of the whole classical tradition, you can do whatever you want. Mm. Well, I think we have time to do one more song. Great. And on this one, Chris uh, joins Michael and Joanna. And this is, this one's about um, how I often feel, especially as a math teacher, I have to tell you guys. I mean, public school teachers who are out there, I salute you. It's, it's, it's been a really <laughs> tough several years. I, uh, teaching teaching math and trying to do music and trying to have a family. Mm. So that's also what the opera's about, is just the struggle. Um, but, th yeah. Here we go. I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep. I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep. I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't 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 get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I can't get to sleep, I cannot get to sleep, I can't get to sleep.
not happy. I like it. Another excerpt from Leave Me Alone. And, and I've, I've got to ask uh, Harvey um, why it's Leave Me Alone. You got to ask Dan. It's his title. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it just came out of, it's just a line at some point in the opera that I say to my wife, leave me alone. Um, there are three words I use frequently. Okay. <laughs> and, and the reason I asked Harvey is because it seems like something you might say from time to time, Harvey. <laughs> I'm not, You're not going to justify I, I that with anybody mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it sounds like a really interesting experiment. Is it something that you would like to try more of? Yeah, sure. I mean, it, it um, cause it's sort of like a, um, it's sort of like a new form. I mean, um, traditionally, as I said, you know, operas, a kind of a corny drama, and you know, the music can be real nice, but, uh, you know, just you know, do doing different types of texts, you know, it's a challenge. And, um, yeah, I, I tried again. Yeah, you're always up for a challenge, if nothing. <laughs> Thank you all. It's, it's been a great pleasure having you in, and I look forward to uh, actually seeing how the whole thing comes together. Yeah, we're looking forward to it, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. No, it's a great group to work with. The, the singers are fantastic. Dan on piano has really re rehearsed them well. Everyone in Oberlin is, you know, very professional. It's, it's been great for me. It's such a treat to come in and get to work with, you know, such professional folks. Excellent. And if you can't see it live, it's, it's um, on the Internet at LeaveMeAloneOpera.com. Very cool. Thanks again. My guests have been Harvey Picar, the librettist, composer Dan Plonzi, producer Paul Schick of Real Time Opera, and on the Oberlin Steinway was Dan Mahalik. Our singers for, were Oberlin Conservatory students, Joanna Lemley, Patty Stubel, Kate Rosen, Gerard Michael D'Amelio, and Christopher Rice. Thank you all as well. This Saturday night at 8 is the free world premiere of Leave Me Alone, their new jazz opera on stage at Finney Chapel on the Oberlin College campus. Find out more about it at 440-775-6933. That's 440-775-6933. Or just log on to our homepage today online at wcpn.org. Thanks to Ideastream's Al Dahlhausen for engineering today's live music. Thank you as well to the Oberlin Conservatory of Music for the use of the Steinway piano in today's performance. And our thanks due to technical, technical producer Jeff Carlton. Our executive producers Mark Rosenberger and Around Noon is produced by Dave DiOrio. I'm Dee Perry inviting you to stay tuned for the next hour as the humanitarian crisis in Gaza is making headlines for the BBC's World Have Your Say between 1 and 2 here on 90.3.